everyone, it's Bethany. In this video, we are going to be working on just some random crafts that I have had on my to-do list for a while now. Some things are going to be serving as some spring decor, some things are going to serve as some craft room organization, and honestly, it's just a list of crafts that I need to get completed. So let's get to it. The first thing I want to do is work on some craft room organization. Now I've mentioned this a couple times, but I'm still getting a lot of questions on when my craft room tour is coming. So I'll try to keep repeating it, but I have mentioned it quite a few times. The craft room tour is coming in May. I do have another delivery from Ikea coming to complete the craft room and that's scheduled for the end of April. So May is when we're gonna get the whole room reveal. So hopefully that helps clear up a lot of the questions I get asked every day. So hopefully that helps. Okay, so this is a cute little container that I have used before in a bigger version, and these are from the Dollar Tree. I really like them. So I found them this spring there in three different colors. So I got two packages of each color, and what I like about these is that they're magnetic. So on the back, there is a magnet, and you've seen me use these, again, in the bigger form before, and I like to keep things in here, such as craft supplies, it's really helpful. And then you can place it either on a magnetic board or you can go ahead and use this to attach as a magnet to your craft cart if you have one of those metal rolling craft carts. So let me grab one of the bigger ones so that you can see how I've used them in the past. So in the past I've used the bigger ones, I just put a little label on there so this one holds some erasers. I obviously don't have my foam tape in there right now, but I housed some foam tape in this. But I was really excited to see the smaller size because I think these are a wonderful way to do little tiny embellishment storage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of each color to start out. And I went ahead and pulled some of my most used sequins for when I'm doing card making or embellishments. Let me see if I can get this open. And I thought I would just go ahead and put my most used in these first. I think I'm going to do four. Do I have four or three? How many labels did I do? I think I did four. Yeah. Okay. So let me go ahead and open and then we'll do maybe two of the pink. So these are really nice. Again, I like to attach them to my craft cart because it's metal so they magnetize right on there and it's super helpful okay these are nice because they're so grab and go and we're going to go ahead like you saw on the larger ones we're going to add a little label to the front so i went ahead i think this is a new font and actually i'm going to use it quite a bit in my crafts today I went ahead and purchased a new font. I'll link it down below so that you can grab it. Oops, I lost the dot to my eye. And I really want to make sure I get that. I don't like it when, when I don't have the dots to the eye. Sometimes I lose them and I have to just be okay with it. But if I can try to get it back, I will. Okay, here we go. Okay, so. Again, new font, I'll link it down below and I'll show you why I purchased it later in the video because I'm gonna do some little chore charts for my kiddos. Again, this video is just essentially a bunch of things that I just need to get off of my to-do list. And at the same time, I'm gonna have a little bit of a spring feel to all of my crafts today because I'm just ready for spring. So it's just time. Let me know if you are finally getting some spring weather in your area, if you are living in an area that has seasons like I do. I love all four seasons. In fact, I was at Bible study this morning and that was one of the questions that we talked about when we were introducing ourselves. Oops, I started a new study today and we had to say what our favorite season was. Mine is fall. Let me know what your favorite season is. Although I'm very ready for springtime to come, but fall is my absolute favorite. And I told everybody it really is because I think, I love all the scents of fall, right? I think the yummy smells of fall, yummy candles. I also love the clothes of fall. Nice 
sweaters and just warmer clothes and layering. I love it. I just love it. But I am the girl who appreciates each and every season. I just like a natural change in the in the weather. It's it's nice. I always welcome all four seasons. I'm ready for them. Okay, so what I did is I just kind of placed all of those on the side there. And I'll just trim that off. Okay, now we are ready. Those were some smaller little words to weed out, but they are all ready to go. And I'm gonna grab this transfer tape here and I'm just going to lay it down all at once and then trim these pieces apart. Now you could add some rubbing alcohol to the top of these little containers. I'm not too worried about it. They look perfectly clean. They were packaged, so I'm not gonna worry about cleaning the surface, though you absolutely can. Okay, let's go ahead, lay the transfer tape over, and then I'm gonna use this little scraper just to burnish down. So, I wanted a nice, simple font. I like a nice, simple font for a label. Let's get some moving pieces on there. And let's go ahead and get these all labeled up. Okay, let's trim these apart and we will get going. So the first one is, in fact, I don't even think I have the sequins to go in this one. It's the peach opal. I love the sequins. In fact, all when I, as always, link everything that's down below, I will go ahead and link my favorite sequins. That way, if you are looking to add to your collection, you'll know what my go-to are. Okay, so there's that. And again, I know I purchased it because I needed a refill, but the state of my craft room is, it's organized chaos right now because again, I'm still moving in. And for the most part, I feel like I'm 95% moved in, but I'm waiting on some kitchen islands from Ikea because I designed my craft room and then moved in and realized I just needed, my husband and I both, came to the same conclusion at the same time that I needed more storage and more, um, I don't know necessarily work surface, well, kind of, and I'll explain why when I do my tour coming up, but we had to pause unpacking and get another order into Ikea. And again, I know it's taking a while, but I, in, I mean, this is my space in real life, right? This is my happy place, this is where I come create, so I don't wanna speed around and speed up this whole moving in process um, because I really wanna do it right the first time. So I'm taking my time to make sure that everything is how I'd like it. Because I find if you don't, if you speed things along and you don't do it right the first time, then it takes longer in the long run, right? Because then you're just redoing everything. So that's no fun. Okay, so I'm gonna fill all these containers. I love how these look. So the gold discs go right in here. Look how perfect the size of these containers are. Isn't that awesome? Oh, I love that. Okay, and then we have, these are my dew drops. Now, I'm only gonna put a few in here because I grab for these so often that I got a really nice case for them or a little container, I suppose. I should say, and I want to put them in there as well. So in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put these over here because these are the size, the size that are left in here are the size I don't use that often. So I'll put those over there as much as I can. And then, come here, I will put my refill in here. I tend to use the medium size the most, and just recently I went through all of them. So now I have that refill. Okay, I'll link this down below too. This was in my Amazon haul. I am obsessed with this. This is a great little container. Again, pop it open, it kind of swivels so you can really get what you need. I think they are intended for, well, I mean, just like anything in life, you can use any type of container to organize whatever you'd like, but make sure I got the right one. Um, I think they are kind of listed as like storage for hair bands and stuff like that. But again, 
I find little containers and they seem to work very well for a variety of craft organization. Okay, so here are those little tiny magnetic containers. I love how those turned out. Again, these I feel like are pretty, you want, I mean, you could, you could potentially worry about them opening up, but they seem pretty, pretty good. If you get your lid right on there, oops, if you get it straight too, then you should be able to be just fine putting those on a little magnetic board or magnetic craft cart. All right, so one thing off my to-do list, let's keep going. Okay, so you know that I love a notebook and I found this notebook at Hobby Lobby and it just screamed spring for me. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna probably try low with my Easy Press Mini. And I have a little piece of foil iron-on here. Okay, and that, so now the reason I'm doing an iron-on is simply because I wanted to do this pretty foil and I had it in iron-on. So you could do an adhesive vinyl if you'd like, but I had this foil. I love a pretty, pretty foil look. And I thought it would be really nice and just complement the colors on this notebook really nicely. So what I'm going to do is as that's preheating, I'm just going to preheat the area that I'm going to add the iron onto. Okay. And then I can, oh, doesn't that look pretty? It looks like it has been there all along. I love a foil look on a notebook like this. It looks like it's, it's custom done. Okay. So now that's almost there. I'll go ahead and just start. It will chime and then turn green when it's ready but let's just see if we can start ironing that down okay here we go nope there now it's ready okay let's just see how that is doing and what i'm going to do is before i attempt to peel that up i'm going to turn it over and i'll let that cool down and the reason i'm turning that over is so that it will come into contact with that nice cold glass mat, and that will help draw the heat out much quicker. Okay, and let's just take a little peek to see if that laid down. And it did. It looks really good. There may have been one little spot up here, and I'm just using this butcher paper just to protect the top of my journal here. Oops, I think I did, I think I did that and might have, I might have got it a little bit. Let's see here. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that is, oh, you know what I did though? Is I kind of got it, it's not too noticeable, but sometimes when you reheat that foil, it kind of gets a little um, texture on it, if you will. And I was trying just to remove this bubble, but that's just fine. That's so pretty, isn't it? And again, I think the soft nature of that foil, also with that nice shine, I feel like it was just made for the look of this journal. And you can't see that, but this is um, embossed right here, so it has a really, really pretty texture to it as well. All right, there is another thing that is on my list. So simple and easy. This is actually a Cricut Designs base font that I did end up purchasing. So I'll link that down below, but just know you can find this in Cricut Design Space. I thought it lent very well to a pretty traditional monogram. Okay, I saw this really, really pretty tumbler at Target recently, and I just had to have it. I thought it was so cute. And what I'm going to do here is, I'm gonna set this to the side a little bit, but as I'm weeding out, I'm going to let this dry. I'm gonna put a little bit of rubbing alcohol right onto the surface. And I'm going to make sure it's nice and clean, especially from oils that may have come into contact with it through lotions or anything like that. Okay, so that's all nice and clean. And what I did here is I used a really fun font that I'll link down below. And this is so pretty because it, I've said this every time I use it, but you can write out anything with this font and it's going to look gorgeous. But I went ahead and wrote out mama on this and then I went ahead and used the offset feature to create an offset. If you don't know how to create an offset, it is so fun. 
and so easy. And I'll place a link to a video that I did all about the offset feature and how and when you might want to use one. So I'll link that video right up in the corner here so that you can learn how to do that if you aren't sure how to complete one of those in Design Space. They're super easy. Okay, there is some extra transfer tape that I can use. And let's see, probably just like that. Okay, that should be just fine. And here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my words on my offset and then I'll place them both together over on my water bottle, but you can do it in any order that you wish. I find it easier to do it this way, but whichever way makes you feel the most confident, then go ahead and do it in that order. Okay. And then I'm going to place this right on down. Okay, and now I will burnish both together. And I like to do the front and the back. It really just helps to peel away that liner much easier. And then with both of them, let me go ahead and just make this this way. I thought the offset would look really nice because this is such a busy pattern that I think the offset's really going to help us actually see the design. Okay, how cute is this? And this would make such a wonderful gift. I'm just gonna go right down the center and then I'll go to the right and to the left to lay that down. Okay, and then come back through with a scraper and really press that down. Oh, I love the contrast on that. I think that actually pops really nicely. Okay, being careful not to scratch the tumbler. But then I peel off that transfer tape. Oh, I love it. The offset was the winner here. That definitely helped to make that really stand out and pop. So um, I don't know if I mentioned this was at Target. I think I did, but if not, I'll try to link it down below, see if they have it online. So cute, and isn't this perfect for spring? I love that. I found this really pretty house blank at Hobby Lobby, and I really liked it. I thought it had some really nice dimension to it. Just really cute and pretty. So what I'm going to do is do a little spring decor on here. And I, again, am using iron-on, and the reason I'm using iron-on is because I ran out of white adhesive vinyl. So I had to place an order last evening and it's on its way, but in the meantime, we have iron-on. And you can iron-on to wood. So if you are out of vinyl and you're wanting to do a wood project, you absolutely can use iron-on. Okay, let me get this weeded out. Oops, I guess I had, oh, there we go. And this is a cute little, SVG that I found. Again, I'll link it down below, but I think I'm going to potentially cut it apart so that it fits the idea that I'm kind of going for with this shaped sign. So this says, Hello Spring. And if I can get, there we go, around that. All right. So it's more of like a square nature. And again, I need to go through and, oh, isn't that cute? Maybe I don't need to trim it apart. I'll have to decide. Okay, let me get it all weeded out and then we can decide. Okay, I think I have everything weeded out. And believe it or not, that doesn't get weeded out even though it looks like it should, but everything is good to go. So what I'm going to do here is I was going to trim this apart just so it would fit and take up some room up here, but I'm looking at this and it looks awesome. So I am not going to do any type of uh, trimming. In fact, though, I might bring this down a little bit. So let's do that. I'm going to trim this piece off. It's just about perfect. And if I was working with, you know, just a square blank, if this was just a square sign, 
then I wouldn't need to do this. But because I have a little bit of a, well, not a little bit, but I have a definite shape to my project in the, in the shape of a, it looks good, in the shape of a house, um, then I'm just gonna kind of edit this a little bit so that it fits more like that. It fits the shape a little bit better. So again, I'm going to use my little mini press here. And because I have a lot of the liner already on the, oh, I didn't pre-press the wood, but I'm not too worried about it. Um, because the liner covers all of the wood, I'm not going to need butcher paper or anything like that. I use the butcher paper if I'm doing like a smaller design and you know, there's areas where my iron will go off and onto the wood just to protect it. But we have it fully covered here. I'll probably have to bring it in though when I do that little piece. Okay, again, I have this on low. I'm just going around and heating all areas of the design. That looks good. I think it's probably going to be good. Let's see if I can peel. Okay, that looks great. Now, because again, I'm gonna bring this in. I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit. It was kind of hugging a little too much there and I wanted to hug the Hello Spring a little bit more and I like that. Very pretty. Okay, so I'm going to bring the butcher paper in this time because I have some vinyl that is exposed now and I don't want my iron to come into contact with that. So now I will just heat up that remaining part of the design. Okay, so that should be just about good. Again, I had that on low and you just want to monitor the project in front of you. Oh, actually there was an area. I wonder if it's because there is an area where there is some iron on here and because that's still hot, I can peel that off. Okay, there was a little unweeded area. Good thing I caught that. Okay, there we go. I think that looks really cute. That's so pretty, so simple. You could, I forgot to mention, you could paint this prior to adding your iron on. I love, you guys know I do, I love the bare wood. I love a natural wood with a white vinyl on it. It just fits my design style, so that's why I did it this way, but you could absolutely pause and paint and then let that really dry before doing any um, decoration on there. So, so pretty. I think that's so simple and I love the softness for spring. Okay, so a couple, was it last week's video? It may have actually been last week's video. I did a daily task list for myself and I love it and it turned out beautiful. And it was just kind of a way for me to build a good routine for my day, to structure my day of things that I wanted to get accomplished each and every day. And when I went ahead and thought of this idea to do it for myself, I, these are from Target by the way, I purchased a couple more for each of my girls. These were in the Target dollar spot. And I thought these were a great way to just start a little, you know, chore or, this is less chore and more um, a morning routine for my two girls. So I made my first daughter one, and now I'm gonna make my second daughter hers. And again, this is just kind of a way for when they get up for the day, they kind of know what they need to get accomplished before we head to school. So I thought this would be super helpful and I love the idea of it being um, a little checklist so that they can go through and get everything accomplished. And I, I think it'll be a really nice way to kind of structure the morning. Okay, so I'm doing, if you haven't caught on, I'm doing a little rainbow pattern here. And I am trying to do it in um, order of how they probably would do their little routine in the morning. Now, of course, they can absolutely do it out of order, but um, I, I thought I would put it kind of in an order that made sense for the structure of the day. Okay, let's go ahead and get these weeded out. Now, this is actually the project that inspired, let me see if I can zoom in here. This inspired 
purchasing this new font and I wanted a font that was not cursive and it didn't have overly complicated um, letters and what I mean by that is I wanted the letters to be um, really simple for kids to read because sometimes you know the G's and the A's they don't look the way the kiddos learn them in school and so sometimes that can be a little tricky so I wanted a really true nice simple font for for them okay so why don't I go through and I'll do all of my reading so we have go potty this again is going to be our little morning routine to get ready for school there we go the next one is brush your teeth I'm gonna go through and get all these little middle parts out. You're gonna love how this turns out. Um, well, I already know how it turns out because I made, I made the this is I have they're actually identical. Um, same tasks for each kiddo. But I did the first one last night and I loved how it turned out. Okay, I'm gonna just trim off those little extra pieces. Okay, so we have brush your teeth and then we have get dressed. So if you wanna see my version of um, my little task list, mine, again, for the girls, I'm doing um, more of a morning routine and then mine is more of a full day routine of the things that I like to focus on during the entire day. Okay, so then we have get dressed and then we have put pajamas away. So that could either mean put them back in your drawer or put them in the laundry basket. Okay, and then we have, I can't remember, what are we doing here? What's the next thing that we do? Oh, tidy your room. Okay, and then we have, lost the eye, but found it. Okay, this is tidy your room. And sometimes we don't have time for this in the morning, but if we have a little extra time and, you know, something needs to get tidied up, then that can be a helpful, helpful way to help mama out. And then the last one, this is something we added this year, the school year, um, cause they're old enough to do it and they actually really enjoy it. So while I'm making their lunches, they, get to pack their snacks so they go we have like a little snack area in our pantry so they get to go pick out their snack for school and go put it in their backpack and they love doing it and honestly it's such a help for me because then I don't um or I can focus on you know making their lunches and and they can be involved in choosing out a snack okay so I'm gonna go ahead and this first one, I, I wanted the transfer tape to be long enough for everything, so I cut it really long there, but it's going to be obviously too long for our first one, but that's okay. We're gonna reuse this piece for each one. Now, actually, what I do wanna do, even though that was packaged, I am going to go ahead and do a little rubbing alcohol, just like this. Make sure that's really nice and clean. Now I did go ahead and save my design in Design Space. That way, as the girls grow, um, we can you know change parts of our routine if we want to add or take away anything. Um, then I have all of the little words in there or the font and size all saved for myself. So that's that can be super helpful to keep your file in Design Space saved so that you can go and edit your project down the road. Okay, so there's the first one and I'll just go through and I'll add each of these and I'm going in a nice rainbow order. And again, I put them in just a realistic order for how, how we kind of do our mornings anyway.
So here is our last one. I love how it looks with the little rainbow look to it. And again, as you saw, I made a little mistake on mine and um, my transfer tape laid down before I wanted it to. So because I had kept my file in design space, I was able to just go back in and recut really quickly. So it really only took me a few moments of a delay, but that's how that turned out. I think that turned out really nice. And again, it came with a little washable or, um, sorry, dry erase marker. And then you can just go through or the girls can go through cause this will be for them, but they can just go through and as they do their little routine, they can check those off. And how cute is that? I love that. So again, I found this at the Target dollar spot. You absolutely can probably find something like this anywhere. Um, but I found them there. And I guess I didn't, oops, I got more grubby. I guess I didn't show you how this works. So you can either have it lay just like that, right? Or you can have it propped up, which is probably what we'll do um, for just maybe sitting on their dresser or something like that. So. Hopefully this was helpful and inspiring. I love how this turned out. And again, I saved everything in design space so that I can just go through and either we can um, put new ones on there or as they grow older um, and more age appropriate little tasks can be put on there, we can do that too. So really fun way to kind of structure um, getting ready for school. And I love how that turned out. Again, to see my version, of what I want to accomplish in a day, you can just go to the previous video. I'll link it down below and you can check that out. Okay, so the Target Dollar Spot just really, they, they know what they're doing. They have the best stuff. So recently I was there and I think this was more during Valentine's Day time, but they had these little popcorn bowl sets and you could get um, one big one and then two little ones in each pack. So for $5 you got two littles and one big. So I went ahead and purchased two because I thought it would be really cute to have little family popcorn bowls. So I am going to have these for my husband and I, and then I thought it'd be cute to put the little kiddos initials on their little bowls as well. We are huge fans of a popcorn during our movie night, which I'm sure most people are, but we like to do popcorn and then we add, um, M&Ms and some kind of like gummy worm or um, gummy bear in our popcorn. Oh, it's so, so good. It's got the nice saltiness of the popcorn and then you have the nice sweet or sour from the gummy worms. So good. The kiddos really love that as well because it's a fun little treat and I don't know, I, mean, I probably love it even more. It's so, so good. I love a sweet and salty snack. So it just is perfect little movie snack. Okay, I am going to just wash down the side of each little bowl to make sure it's ready to receive the vinyl. And then I'll link this font down below, but I'm just going to put their first little initial on each bowl. Some transfer tape here. In fact, I can use just the little end of this, just like that. Oh my goodness, as I craft today, I like to put together videos, you know, that have like a common theme, right? So either holiday or gift giving or something like that. But sometimes it really, I feel like some of my most fulfilling videos for myself are the ones where I am just working through my task list because I feel like I have so many ideas and I'm quick to add to cart sometimes. And then sometimes it's hard to find the time, right? I mean, I know we all probably struggle with this too, right? So many ideas, so little time. And it's nice to set aside time just to go through all of those crafts that have been sitting undone. And this is helping me out too, because as I'm preparing for my craft room tour, I'm able to clean up and, whoops, get some of these, sorry for that noise, um, get some of these crafts done. Isn't that cute? I just wanted these to be, very simple. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just finish up the last two. Okay, so I just went ahead and used my thumb to press down each of these decals because I'm laying it down right on the edge of a very minor curve to that bowl. So it just kind of 
help to do it a little bit more manually that way. So I have all of these done. Let's go ahead and put them all in here. But how cute. I love how simple those are. And then everybody knows which popcorn and candy is theirs. Very cute. All right, time to schedule movie night. Okay, I was recently at um, Hobby Lobby and I saw these oversized paper clips. How pretty are these? These are a great idea for gifts for if you're either in a um, mom's group or a Bible study or if you're in a book club. These are so fun because these can make for very fun bookmarks. So I'm going to show you what I want to do here. Now I've seen something like this out there before, but I've never done this before. Um, and I knew exactly when I saw these paper clips that I wanted to, to try this out. So I was at Dollar Tree and I initially bought the pom pom maker. I, my mom has something like this and um, it looks super interesting and easy to use. So I went ahead and purchased it. I think I'm going to use, it says the, and I'm assuming, is this the end? size of the pom-pom would be almost um, two inches. I'm, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll just see how it plays out, but I'm not going to rip the back because I want to make sure I can see how to use this, but let's see if I can use the smaller one. We'll see what size this makes. Now, again, they, they make these not from the Dollar Tree too, but I thought I'd try the Dollar Tree one out. Okay. So now it says, I also got these at Dollar Tree as well. Um, two little things of yarn. So let's see here where the trick is finding the end of the yarn. Where are ya? I'm just kind of, oh, there we go. Okay. I was going to say there was a little piece there. Okay. So loop the yarn around the pom pom maker. So apparently this needs to come up, come apart in some way. How does this come apart? Or do they, oh, is it like this? Oh, maybe like, maybe like this. Okay. So I just, I had it closed like that and then opened like that. Is that right? How does this work? Well, I'm going to open it up kind of like this to start and then we'll see. So I'm going to start at this side and then I think we just, just start wrapping. Is that right? Maybe I should call my mom. I don't know. Okay, let's see. Let's just start wrapping. And I'm trying to make sure that end doesn't fall apart. Okay, and then when I get to the end here, what I think I'll do is just, um, Oh, maybe I'll shut this side and open this one so it just goes right to the next one. Whoops. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. Because I want it to kind of continue. I think I'm overcomplicating it. But also the directions are kind of... Um, I feel like it could use one more visual <laughs> on how to get this started. I have to watch a pom-pom making video or something to simplify this. So let's see how this turns out. Okay, so I have this all wrapped and then it looks like you close it. Is that right? Okay. I don't think I have a lot of loose yarn here. Okay, and then I'm going to trim this and then go through. Maybe I need some smaller scissors to go through and then trim. Okay, there we go. And then this side. Okay, now though, what do I do? 
Oh, that piece just came off. That piece just came off. But now what do I do to put it all together, guys? Use yarn to tie around the pom-pom maker. So I just do it along the, the middle part. Maybe bring a piece in here. Is that right? This little maker's falling apart. I gotta get it tied before this all falls apart. Okay, so I think this might be right. Okay. Because I just took a little piece and tied it around this. So this is gonna connect all of the little pom-pom pieces. Oops, oh my goodness, see it's falling apart. Hold on, but I have my yarn in there, so again, this little pom-pom maker was from Dollar Tree, so it was $1.25. If it falls apart, it falls apart. Okay. Okay, and then, okay, we tied that. <laughs> and, oh, let's see if we can get it out of here. So I just kind of took this apart. Okay, is that what it's supposed to look like, guys? I mean, I guess it looks like a pom-pom. And I'm going to use those those larger pieces, which are my two pieces. I think they were here to tie it to. Oh, that's kind of cute. Tie it to my paper clip. Okay, so let me do that. And I'm I'm sure if you use maybe fluffier yarn, also that would really make this a little bit more. Oh, that's cute though. Let me get the little ones all uniform. So those two pieces or two ends that I use to tie it together. I'm just going to trim those. I'm gonna get a little haircut so it matches the rest of the pom-pom. Oh my goodness, I think that actually looks so cute. Isn't that fun? And so then these can be little, um, little bookmarkers or you could put it in your planner and just kind of show a little marker for where your day is. Oh my gosh, I think that is actually adorable. Okay, so if I brought my little notebook back in here, then I could just place this in here and it serves as not only a little bookmark but it's kind of a little piece of decor as well isn't that cute I love that idea okay so the little um, oversized paper clips were from Hobby Lobby and then of course the yarn and the little pom-pom maker were all from Dollar Tree but you can get a um, more expensive a pom-pom maker if you'd like mine was kind of literally falling apart as I was using it but it served the task and made one but I'd probably get another one that wasn't as fragile if I was going to do a lot of these very cute okay so in addition to those cute little popcorn bowls I got everything on my task list done and I am absolutely loving this to-do list I think this is going to be a wonderful way to structure our mornings I am really really loving how this turned out with the foil monogram and then of course the little bookmark I think that's so fun these um, will be really great gifts if you had to make something in bulk. So again, think of coworkers and Bible study friends or book club friends, anything like that. These would be really cute and fun to personalize and make. I love the spring sign. This served as something that was on my to-do list, but also something that I can enjoy for this spring season. The water bottle is adorable. I really think that the offset really um, made that shine and it was the winning um, design on there. So I love how that looks. Definitely consider using an offset when you have a more busy backdrop because it will help your text stand out or the design that you put on stand out. And then of course, a couple additional things to organize my craft room. Again, these are magnetic, so I'm just gonna put them on my craft cart. And I think these are, I think these are really cute. I love how they turned out. So thanks for crafting along with me today. Let me know if you have a long craft list that you tend to continuously add to, but maybe don't have time to complete. So this is kind of your nudge to go ahead and grab that list and get it done. So hopefully this was inspiring to you and hopefully this gave you a couple of ideas of maybe crafts you want to complete as well. All right, everyone. See you next time.